Londo Malari of the Centauri Republic. <sighs> Jakar Likari. Jiha Trakaida from Jirazi Freehold. Niki Sumatrado of Dark Ruffles. Lurnar of the Pat Fora Delegation. Tula Vitwa of the Horn. Sheila of the Gay. So we have a full, full house. So many <laughs> days. Oh, we Ambassador Koch. Glad to see you've made an appearance. You're welcome to take your Why are you place here? at the uh to just ask. I suppose we can move into our first order of business to consider tonight. Uh, Captain. Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, a point of personal. Could we have that? Pornography removed from the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I endorse the movement. <laughs> we would third that. I think we should take up new business later <laughs> and go with the old business that was on the agenda. <laughs> since since this is not an official declaration of this council, I will uh, authorize Mr. Garibaldi or one of his designated 
people to remove the portrait of Ambassador Malari. He's welcome to put it up in his quarters if he wishes. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Oh, and if you do not choose to do so, I would like it. <laughs> I have a new set of darts. <laughs> Here, look after the portrait for me. I have read it. Our first order of business on the agenda is the security and defense of Babylon 5 following the Declaration of Independence. As you may know, hope you know, during our recent War of Independence from the Clark regime, <coughs> Babylon 5 separated from the Earth Alliance, and we are now in need of protecting. Up till this point, our protection has consisted entirely of our own forces that were left over from that battle, plus Ambassador DeLynn's uh, Mimbori War Fleet has been stationed outside the station. But it would behoove, I think, this station to expand to uh, include the, our, our, the non-aligned worlds and others in the defense of the station. So I propose, I proposed a, and I believe I've sent, you've seen copies on your electronic media, perhaps. Um, a Babylon 5 defense treaty which simply agrees that you will supply a certain proportion of ships to the defense of this station on a rotating basis and in return you'll be allowed um, vast discounts and free access to the transshipment facilities of our station and to the uh, loading and unloading and, and so forth. So if there are any comments, anyone I'll recognize about it. I'll recognize first uh, Chikar. Thank you, Captain. The Narn, the legitimate Narn government in rebellion, pledges its full military support to the safety of Babylon 5. Well, Chikar, I appreciate the spirit in which that is offered. I'm not sure. We are, we are very appreciative of the security forces that you have contributed in recent times. And we have several heavy cruisers that have not yet been committed to the battle. Um, I'm somewhat, perhaps, well, if there are no objections. I would speak. Yes, Ambassador. Um, I disapprove of this. We do not have ships to spare. We are being too much under attack ourselves, our own trading lines and worlds. We do not have ships to spare to defense of the station. We can work out a proportion that is agreeable, I think, with each of us. It does not have to be the same proportion, depending upon your personal, your personal government situation at this time. If you're saying that you feel you have none, I'm sure that most of us here feel that our ships have other, well, except for, of course, the stations, have other tasks that might be more important, but surely some small, some small amount so that you can be represented, because then you would not, you would, in fact, be perhaps, as it might turn out, the only, the only government represented here that did not have uh, privileges, discount privileges on our transshipment facilities. So you're bribing us into protecting your station? Oh! Is it that you feel there is such a need for this protection? What is the threat that you are frightened of? I, it's a very good question. I was speaking entirely of the Earth Alliance, President Clark. You want uh, us to protect you from your own government? They're not our government currently. They're an illegal occupational government controlling our home worlds but we are wholly independent and will be until... Why should we risk ourselves and our ships to protect you from the, your own people whom you disagree with? Because we feel that Babylon 5 serves an important purpose and it provides something that no one else, no other single government here can provide. That is a place, as we're meeting right now, where we can all come together and work against greater threats. Such as your own little squabbling amongst your own people. We think that perhaps this squabbling is a symptom of a larger, uh, a larger problem. But uh, Ambassador Vidrazi, 
I do agree with my esteemed ambassador that it does seem like a threat, Captain, that you, you threaten if we cannot commit ships that, well, we can't use the facilities. But to be perfectly honest, we have problems of our own home world. We have strange boarding parties and raiding parties along our borders of the, dra of the drowsy worlds, of uh, which we're gathering proof now that we have to fight off those attacks. How can we commit ships to something here at the station when we have problems in our own worlds that we can't even duel off now? You feel you need more protection than that that the Membari provides? Okay. How to, could to we even equal what the Membari provides? To address these points, it's not that we need more protection than the Membari provide. We think it would be equitable and fair that more than just the Membari have to shoulder the burden and the responsibility. Um, to, to address the uh, Drazi Ambassador's point, we're not denying you access to our facilities. We're simply saying that we will offer discounted rates on our transshipment facilities dependent upon the, the proportion of con and contributions that you make. Yes, Ambassador. Um, Captain Sheridan, the Procurier are deeply aware of the business opportunities which we have been afforded to the use of the Babylon 5 station. And assuming we can work out the terms of this agreement to our mutual satisfaction, see no reason why we should not carry some part of the burden of defending the station against these Earth Force, who, as we all should know, have a very strong anti-alien policy that if they took back the station, might cause us to lose all access to Babylon 5, which could be a severe disruption of trade to my people, I know. Yes, yes. Thank you, Ambassador. Yes, Ambassador. What transshipment lines are you talking about? I thought that uh, you are having problems in this regard because of the government of your people. I'm talking about the facilities on the station. <coughs> um, for by your government? Yeah. Might I ask a question yeah. for the land? Why is it that uh, you have your ships committed here to protecting this station and its interests? You do not require the facilities, and is there not a civil war and unrest upon your own home planet where your ships might be of more use? There is no civil war occurring on Minbar right now. There is, we have our own share of problems. This is true, I will not deny it. But we have decided to send ships to help protect this station because we believe, as he said before, it serves a greater purpose of unifying the races and allowing us to discuss things freely and on a fairly neutral ground. As the Procurie Ambassador said, should this fall into the hands of the government controlling the earth controlling earth at the moment we fear the anti-alien policies would be very bad for the diplomatic interests of this area also also the Mimbari feel it is important to stand up in the face of such tyranny Can I say something? certainly ambassador <laughs> well I think that Allegedly. if <laughs> First of all, I'd like to know where the seat of your government is. And if you are a rebellious faction of that government, where do you consider that seat of government? Remember, Babylon 5 is supposed to be a neutral point. Babylon Isn't that right? If this is a neutral point, why are we in this gentlemen, amongst the humans? Gentlemen, Babylon 5 is a neutral port for all races, for all governments. And we are merely attempting to guarantee that freedom and openness. I don't think that any of you have any illusions. You've seen the reports on ISN. You've seen how it's changed since Clark took over. It's silly. Um, I, based upon the objections that have been raised, though, I can see that clearly there's more technical work that needs to be done on the treaty. I'm willing to table this matter. We can bring it up at another, a later date. We will continue to allow Ambassador DeLynn to provide all our defense in that time. Until well, then, yes, Captain Sheridan, um, I would be willing to commit some forces from the Centauri Republic and the forces of our ally if you would be willing to have them. Ally? What ally are you talking about, Ambassador Moore? I think it's best to have them talk for themselves. Senator? May I address the council, Captain? And you are? Kidden Hathaway, Earthline Senate. 
Oh yes, I believe I met you last night. Yes, we met at the party. This is a free station. So I do not want to give anyone the sense that we are censoring anything. So if the other ambassadors do not mind for a few moments, we'll allow a representative from the Clark regime to speak. Go right here. Thank you. I must confess to having been here a very short time. I don't know a lot about the way things are run on the station. I've only had a cursory viewing of the Babylon 5 Treaty itself. But I can say for certain that a lot of the concerns I have heard raised thus far are not, <laughs> not valid. We have a Klingon visitor. We have a Klingon ambassador. Except now. <laughs> Uh, uh, my apologies for the fanfic <laughs> quite all right. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, I find it curious that many of the claims that have been made thus far regarding President Clark and his government back home have not been substantiated very well. I hear all sorts of negative, negative things, but no one has come to speak to me about them. No one has even bothered to speak to President Clark or anyone else in Earth know about them, and yet they all apparently are true right off the bat, like things are taken for granted. Excuse me for just a moment, Senator. Mm. Uh, the ambassador has a question. Uh, uh, not a question, a statement. I've had innocent, honest, precarious businessmen forced off the planet after Clark imposed martial law. So we, the Rafiri, have certainly suffered some of the things accused, the court government's accused of, and there's not frivolous tale there. Thank you, Ambassador. Well, that's, that's a very understandable result of what has been going on on Earth since the end of the Earth and Bali War. And it's very unfortunate <laughs> that everyone else... Excuse me, uh, Ambassador, you <laughs> need to bring your snacks with you too. <laughs> <laughs> Down below. I haven't seen Lord Reef in an awful long time. <laughs> 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 I'm very concerned where it came from, but uh, we'll let Mr. Garibaldi look into it. Perhaps we should send it to Ned Lack for Dr. Frank's DNA testing. Then we'll let Dr. Frank and Mr. Garibaldi look into it. I'm sorry, Senator. I, I must confess that this is always like this around here. <laughs> Too often this is a to slow talk day. Uh, <laughs> I have a question for Quite the sure. Senator. Very much, yes. yes. I, my deepest sympathy, do you have a friend who died? Do you have this black armband? No, this is a symbol of an Earth organization that President Clark has instituted in his time in office in order to root out unwelcome influences in Earth government. Aliens? No, not exactly. To an extent, we have found certain factions that have well, there's no blunt way of putting it, have conspired against our own government from within. And, well... It's quite like Sheridan. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Sheridan is not exactly in that fashion. <laughs> it's <laughs> not just a conspiracy after all. Oh, no, no, no. Now, we are, we, now wait a you, you must admit that conspiracy and treason in first person are treason is never illegal. It is only in the third person. Then Their treason, treason yes. that it is illegal. We are so, I, I'm going to address your points when you're, when you're finished, so I, that's why I have not commented so far, and I want you, I'm without meditating to go right ahead. I was getting to address some of the points made a moment ago. The Kiri Ambassador mentioned something in regards of wedding that free trade to the station might be stopped. I can assure you that should she be returned to her rightful government, that is not the case. Babylon 5 is far too valuable a resource to be squandered only on Earth-only pursuits. Out here we can have access to multiple governments, multiple things that we cannot get at our own, back in our own colonies, our own worlds. Ah, uh, the Minbari ambassador, yes. <laughs> she mentioned something regarding anti-alien, and the Bikini ambassador brought that up as well. And as I mentioned a moment ago, we have had certain factions of our government that have been involved in a conspiracy against our own with aliens. And it is unfortunate that innocent bystanders, such as your Brickyard merchants back home, have become involved in such a thing. 
That is one reason we have created the Night Watch, is to ferret out those who are actually involved in the conspiracy and to avoid entangling those who are not. Unfortunately, things get a little hectic from time to time, as I've seen here, so I know you all know what I'm talking about. And, uh, Captain, if I might say, one yes, alien, after all, looks very much like another to a human, perhaps. Perhaps to the Night Watch. Mm. We shall see. Anyways, let's see. And the last point. Ah, yes. You, Captain Shadow, were concerned about President Clark himself. I find it curious that for almost two years you've been out here doing your duty and suddenly you don't feel that necessary anymore. I know that several other members of the Watch and very Earth Alliance organizations have passed the station all written very highly of you. I must admit I am surprised and disappointed by what has transpired. But I believe that it can be resolved peaceably. That is why, personally, I do not see any need for the military defense treaty you are looking at. Now, I'm sure Captain Sheridan feels threatened by our Earth Force cruisers, and it is true that, recently, a military invasion of Babylon 5 was attempted, but in the confusion back home, things were done in haste, and I have managed to convince several others in the watch, and President Clark's regime himself, that such an attempt is inadvised. Senator, are you trying to tell me that the launching of two waves of Omega destroyers against this station, threatening the lives not only of its own crew, but also of a quarter of a million other representatives of other governments, was a small mistake? I said nothing of the kind, actually. But, as you so well, so put it a minute ago, it didn't really matter much anyway. Although, I'm quite confident that without the intervention of the Mbadi, you would have fallen away. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I am here to put a peaceful end to this, if I can. But that is why I am here. Can I ask a question? Yes, I'm asking. Does this mean that the Earth Alliance is committing to a non-aggression diplomatic solution to the question of Babylon 5's independence? I am not authorized at this time to make such a commitment, but then you say nothing. <laughs> I raised a question. What yes, is this uh, about the alliance between you and the Centauri? Oh, the Centauri and Earth government signed an alliance oh, roughly six months ago or so. A non-aggression treaty, as it were. Very mutually beneficial for both, I believe. We have since increased our presence in Centauri space in Bayonars. Another, again, another example of unfounded claims of anti-alien sentiment back home. So, if this station were in danger of being attacked by your government, if, then it is most likely that it would have the backing of the Centauri as well? Not as such. The Centauri have preferred to stay out of our internal matters thus far, and we have not asked for their help as such. Uh, Saradin asks for their help to defend the station from them. Yes, he does. And I have every confidence in Mr. Excuse me, Ambassador Malari and his staff that they will see the wisdom in avoiding such an entanglement and conflict of interest. Senator, <coughs> you uh, raise your point with a nice veneer of civility, but we've seen overwhelming evidence to show that the person you represent, President Clark, obtained his office illegally through the assassination of his predecessor. We have that evidence. We had turned over to Clark, which promptly disappeared. We have martial law declared back home. We have the bombing of civilians on Mars. We have dead everywhere over the situation. Babylon 5, therefore, declared its independence, and we are not treasonous against our home. We are loyal to Earth, and as loyal to Earth as anyone has ever been. We are not willing to support, however, an illegal government which bombs its own, ci its own, its own citizens, and we will remain independent until such time as President Clark is removed from office and prosecuted for his crimes, and a popularly elected president takes his place with ambassador. If I may, Sheridan, you will bring up illegal governments and tyrannical powers. Um, and yet, you are in this position of power 
um, that you now have because you were placed here by the Earth Force. You'll say so freely that we decided to break away from your government, but I do not recall being consulted on this matter, nor I do I believe any of my colleagues were. And I am unsure what status you now have here other than that of an illegal, tyrannical dictator yourself. It's a fair question, Ambassador. Here's the answer. You and the other alien delegations are here as guests, diplomatic guests on a neutral, sta on a neutral ground, diplomatically. However, this station is the property of Earth. It was under the administration of the Clark government. We have broken away the command staff of this station, which operates this station, voted unanimously to sever our ties with that government until such a time as President Clark is removed. Therefore, we continue to operate as an autonomous state which continues to allow you here as guests. What makes you the head of this organization then? Because I was the duly appointed head of the command staff. Yes, but you sat by the mean. government that you left and said that you wish nothing to do with. Should not a vote be held amongst this command staff as to who the leader is? We have is? maintained the previous ranking structure. Thank you. Yes, I'm I would like to bring and, uh, I am sure ships are very primitive. That is a possibility, and we can consider it when we, re when we get down to the serious negotiation of the treaty. Can I have one more? Yes. Uh, I'm assuming that the control of the people is maintained by the uh, What kind of intelligence do you share with our crew so you know what you're getting into? I think that we would set up some sort of coordinated command structure and we can certainly discuss uh, in private with, with, them, with the ambassadors um, some sort of intelligence dissemination arrangement. Um, again, if there are no objections, I would like to move that we table this item for further negotiations at a later date and move on to the second item on the agenda. That would be right. Let's do it to the rest. <laughs> 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 it's been brought to my attention that there are matters to look into. I would like to have a brief recess. We will reconvene. And I was wondering if you'd bring that. I do not think it's a matter for everybody else to vote on. We have a representative that we've sent to represent you now. I heard, it's not your car. I heard something about this last night. I don't know anything about it. I asked that Narn exactly where he gained his authorization. He would not tell me. He gave me very little information at all. So maybe that's more than I found out before. Um, As we open next time, I would like you to make sure if Carr knows he is no longer on his council about the aims of such associates willing to bomb a secret race into near oblivion. So if you want me to start a new order of business after we voted on the old order of business? Something for the council. He is not the non representative. It is not for a group vote. He is not the non representative. Why don't you understand that? Yes. Let me talk to Jakar. Excuse me. We had a certain another Narn representative in. I don't know the... Let me ask you this, Captain. The Narn government, before the Centauri election, was a democratic system elected by 
the Congo, who appointed me their ambassador. How you handle it? I don't know. The Centauri have illegally and in violation of many treaties established a military hegemony and dictatorship on our planet. They have death camps, they have forced labor camps. They are in scope much worse than the very forces that you have declared independence against. Ah, but, but the sticking point is that if you allow them to replace the legitimate government of the Nile with their puppets, you have no alternative but to surrender yourself to the senator who is who could make the very same claim about your representation. I think that perhaps what we should do when we reconvene is have allow both you and the other Narn to speak to the council and we can decide. Ambassador Malari is opposed to this, but I feel that the council sets its own rules and its own agenda, and therefore it is the council's decision and not simply mine. I've had enough of being accused of being a dictator today already without inviting one more accusation. So when we reconvene, we will bring the matter up and this other Narn can be considered in your place. You know that I'm with you, but there's only so much I can do. So I may count upon your support. <laughs> you always have my support. Okay. Of course, if it's not this, then. But how could it be anything else? No. All right, they told us not this time. But your people have already discovered that it's some sort of weapon. And you are a very clever people. And you are smart enough. Please do not give us unnecessary flattery. I would prefer to feel talk straight. All right. And here's the straight talk. You know what it is. After that, Excuse me. <laughs> establishment of death camps, a forced labor camps. They have not held elections. This is an appointed government by a military broken power. It has no validity. Oh, you are the true elected will Yes, I am the representative of the Kyrie, appointed as ambassador. I will see what I can do. There is a problem with that. Have you given serious thought to how you're going to close them? Commander Ivanova and I have been in negotiations in private with, not that it's any of your concern, with ambassadors from all the other powers, large and small, in recent days, and we are working out those arrangements presently, as well as with neutral, unaffiliated parties that trade with everyone. So, I think we'll be just fine. But again, we could speed things right along on reconciliation with Earth if we just pass on to President Clark that he can simply step down and we will be happy to turn this station back over. And I'll take this, well, this uniform and my previous one that's currently crumpled up in a box in my quarters and just them both out the airlock and move into retirement. Well, I will pass that along. Thank you. Thank you. Here, everyone's so, best interest. Whatever we can do. Of course. Ambassador. Ambassador. Oh, my, our ships would not stand a chance. <laughs> I have another <laughs> very weak Please. Well, then they all know who has controlled or influenced over the we are voting on the other persons over here. Why should we be voting on them? We're voting on who? has the legitimate right to sit at this council. And this council, as I've said, sets its own rules, its own agenda. Therefore, this council must decide who has the credentials to sit with it. I believe that's a rather cryptic I'm sure. There is a There is a They are oppressive. They are killing. They have forced labor camps. They have death camps. And you support capitulation? If you have your way, there will be no more lives on the knowledge. Council will come back to order now. We'll probably need to address. We have some question over the uh, legitimate representation on this council. 
of the Narn government. Now before I turn it over to anyone else, I want to make this very clear. This council operates under its own rules. It decides who is allowed to sit at it. And so I therefore believe it is the purview of this council to decide who should be seated on it. Therefore, I will allow... Hey, Captain. Yes, Jakar. I would like to motion that the vote on this issue be postponed until after the second item on the agenda. Well, I'm certain that you would, but I think that it's too pressing, and we need uh, to go ahead and uh, take care of it. I made a motion. <laughs> I was hoping I could overlook that part. <laughs> What essentially, essentially what Jakar has motioned. Actually, I will not allow that because the, 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 the right of Jakar to sit at the council is currently not concluded. Therefore, he cannot make a motion. Uh, point of order. I'll allow that. <laughs> Since I have not been removed from my seat, I have the right. To make a motion. Does, yeah. <laughs> does, but I don't but, know if you're anyone here second. Excuse me, Ambassador. But <laughs> the very issue that we look at at this moment is the legitimacy of Jakar to sit the council. Therefore, I don't think it would be appropriate well, for Jakar to certainly abstain from my own vote. Might I ask what is the problem? Why he is not wishing to sit with the council? Well, I'll let uh, Ambassador Malari uh, address that. No, I'd rather Ambassador Jakar. Answer the question. It is in the Ambassador Malari has brought a representative of a puppet regime that the Centauri wish to install and fool you all into believing is the legitimate regime of the Narn people. This regime counsels for the good of all Narn to submit to their forced labor camps, their death camps to the inhumane conditions, and to the commitment of the atrocities that they do so as a occupied forces. So they, they are not elected by the Kauri. They do not represent the will of the Narn people. In your words. Yes. And so, Ambassador Malari questions my right to represent the Narn as the appointed ambassador of the pre-invasion, the pre-aggression, the pre-conquering aggression from the Centauri. Um, well, then I would ask what the problem is. You seem to represent a faction of your government who is in opposition with the government that is in control of your planet. Uh, on the contrary, I represent the government that is in opposition to the conquerors of our planet. So there is no faction within you are a faction of resistance, then, yes. No, we I are see, the forces of the resistance. I see what is, I wish to see what is the difference between you and Mr. Sheridan. <laughs> I called that question to Mr. Sheridan myself. Well, because we occupy territory and, have, and are able to defend it at the well, most I basic real politic level. The only difference I see is that because <coughs> you are the one in control of the state. So, so you're advocating a rule of might? I'm saying that if Jakar had been able to take a moon of the Narn regime and break away and hold it against uh, any occupying forces, then I would, I would certainly, for one, in a personal capacity, be willing to recognize it as a as a as an alternate, uh, possibly legitimate representative of the Narn people. And yet, you have granted me sanctuary here for Centauri oppression because you have no other place to go. Are you withdrawing that sanctuary? No, I'm not, I'm not withdrawing your personal san uh, sanctuary whatsoever. And I grant you that personally with, as my uh, option as, as, the, as the military governor of this station. However, I am allowing this council, if it chooses to do so, to put to question your right to represent your government on this council. As chair of this council, I have no other choice, my own personal feelings notwithstanding. And in truth, I welcome such a debate, but I would prefer that we postpone it until the issue of the current aggressive behavior by Centauri and other races along the rim is addressed. I Point of order, Mr. Sheridan? Yes, Ambassador. 
um, I do not see why there would be a problem with having two Narns representing their different factions. Not that they would have more power well, necessarily, and why not two of the human factions? Ambassador, that is something that we can certainly discuss in substantive dis d debate when, when it is time for that. But right now, the question before us is very simply put, do we move on to item two before we debate that point, or where do, do we debate immediately the seating of the Narn? That is the question that we address right now, and that is what must be decided before we can go into substantive debate on either topic. Yes, Ambassador. As a undisputed member of the council, I have my motion that we vote upon the proper place of Mr. Jakar on or off the council so as to get this matter over with. So that on to the important item number two thank, on our agenda. Thank you, Ambassador. There's a motion on the floor. Yes. I hear second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Actually, on a procedural vote, I believe the non-aligned have an yeah. equal vote with all of us. So, all in favor of immediately considering the NARN issue. I think the easiest way to do it would be to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Mike, I ask all you're in voting. <laughs> all opposed? In all, I'm sorry, Ambassador, we are in voting at this moment. All Why opposed? Ambassador, we are in chair. voting in this council. When we complete <laughs> yeah. the voting. I wish to know why there is a human in the Borlon's chair. Jeez. We can address the <laughs> Borlon seating <laughs> after we address Narn seating. The ambassador I'm does opposed. <laughs> the motion, all opposed? <laughs> we are therefore, we are now for moving into consideration of the Narn position on this council. Um, I will recognize first the, if, if, if Ambassador Malari, I believe, has some connection with this gentleman, this Narn, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Narn representative that the Centauri have uh, proposed. You may address the council. And you are? Nafar. Nafar. I have been sent by the ruling powers of my planet to represent the best interest of all Narn, not simply the interests of certain factions within our government. <coughs> Having observed the actions taken by this council, I believe that diplomacy is the truest way to bring about any sort of lasting peace and prosperity, and I am not 100% certain that diplomacy is being rendered by the current representation of the nine people. It is therefore the will of the government on my planet that I represent the nine factions, and that Jakar be removed from his position as ambassador. Thank you. Yes, I've asked you. A question, if I may, of this uh, Nafar? Yes. The um, yes. Centauri military presence has been withdrawn from your world? The current status of the Centauri military presence is an internal matter. That so the Centauri are still militarily occupying your world? I can neither confirm nor deny that statement. Thank you. Well, I have. Yes, Jakar. Nafar? At whose insistence are you taking up what you consider to be your role? I have been Were there elections on the planet, or were you preferred by the Centauri government? As the Kari is disbanded, your claim to your position of ambassador is no more. It is now invalid. I have been selected <laughs> the by the powers in control of our planet to represent our and, planet. And who are those? They are the ruling powers of our planet. And who are they? I believe the list of all the representatives and councilmen, various other political officials, would be far too long to go into. You are evasive. I would ask that Nafar answers the question. I believe the answer of the ruling powers of my planet is sufficient and accurate. We tend to disagree as well. Well, you have that right to disagree. 
it sounds like you are dancing around the issue and will not say that you have been appointed by this entire. Well, the Gentlemen, please! See. I do not think that everybody here can come up with, off the top of their head, a list of everybody that represents their government. I, I know I, I know know. Know. <laughs> not represent in your government that appointed you to your position. I appointed myself. My <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ambassador. If I may point out, it seems to me to be a worrisome example, if a member of the council who had been placed there by his lawful government, due to alien invasion, said government is displaced and said representative is no longer felt to be a good representative, any one of us could face displacement by the, oh, one hates to say the spokesman of a puppet regime, but it could happen. It's a worrisome precedent. If there are any further questions for Nafar, we need to let uh, Jakar have his statement. If I might make a closing statement. Oh, certainly. Absolutely. Every one of the ambassadors here was selected by their legitimate governments. Thank you. And, well, current exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> and no one here is debating the claims of the legitimacy of their governments. If we sat here and debated whether or not the Lord Ambassador was legitimately selected or legitimately representative of her people, we would be here all night, no political action would be taken, and prosperity would be put on hold. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Farr. Jakar, you may address the Council. I will be brief and make only two points. The first is a practical point. We all know Nafar to be put forth as a puppet by the Centauri. If he replaces me on the council, that gives the Centauri two votes instead of one, which is unfair and eliminates the, the power of all the rest of them. Two, I will badly, badly, badly paraphrase an ancient Terran. When they came for the Lord, I did nothing. I was not the Lord. When they came from the Procuri, I did nothing. I was not the Procuri. When they came for the Narn, there was no one left to help. Thank you, Jakar. We are now moving into voting on the issue. Um, the vote being whether or not I'm going to make that clear, no. yes, I'm not sure. A yes vote. A yes vote indicates... We're debating the legitimacy of somebody upon this council. I'm going to say a bit word on this issue. Um, you do not have the authority to speak in this council. I'm a guest of this entire republic. As their guest, I may speak before the council. Not when without permission of the chair. I will yield my time on this issue to Naruto. You have you no time, time left. It is a to a vote. Well, I shall speak anyway. <laughs> Mr. Naroon, if the vote is needed, what the vote. We have to discuss the legitimacy of Delenn speaking for our government. She speaks for us because honestly, nobody else wants to be here. Excuse me, Naroon, but simply put, if, if the Centauri wish to allow you to speak to this council, that can certainly be allowed at the proper time, but at the moment we are about to go into voting, on the issue that is before us. So well, you have five minutes. I wait, wait, wait. I wish to know if there is a problem with her power of a vote. There is an issue of whether or not he has the ability to vote. <laughs> Council! <laughs> the question of whether or not her vote is this Captain Sheridan. Ambassador, the vote on order. The vote on Empire wishes to speak. <laughs> there are other... The vote. I will allow the Vorons to speak. Oh, I see. <laughs> Believe me, I will allow the Vorons to speak. But you will not allow... Silence! The Vorons are on the council. Silence! The vote is needed. vote. We are, we are now in voting. I'll be back for you, Glenn. A, a yes vote indicates that you believe Jakar should remain. A no vote indicates you believe Nafar 
should take his place. I wish to raise an objection. We are being bullied and threatened by more powerful forces. The Vorlans have a voice here, but they do not are not permitted to command us. Ambassador, just because they are more powerful. You can take your matters up with the Vorlan Empire in your own time. They threatened all of us. They direct us. You Thank are allowing you. them to command us, just as you tell us what to do. Thank you, Ambassador. We're now in voting. We're now in voting. Again, a yes vote. A yes vote <laughs> indicates that you wish Jakar to remain. This is a substantive matter. The council votes if there is a tie. The non-aligned will vote together to, to break the are tie. Are you only going to address issues that but you are concerned with? Jakar, Ambassador, Ambassador, Ambassador excuse, excuse me, you're going to ignore it? We are <laughs> in the but middle. There is a question we are in the middle of right voting. Vote. I will have Mr. Garibaldi clear this room. You do not have the right to vote. Call the procedures that you all agree to. I'm about to have you removed, Ambassador. You are this close to being removed from this chamber, and you cannot follow the rules you agreed to when you came in here. I believe that you are not following the rules either, Mr. I'm Mr. You look have them up. this here in there. Look the them up. We are in voting. There are no points of order during voting. We move through voting, and then you can raise your points all that you wish. After all, Honorable Pat Monroe, you have to remember that, as Mr. Sherrickin said, the council operates under its own rules. <laughs> Which it agreed upon previously. Oh, the car does not have a vote. The, the four of us here will vote. As I recall, your seat is the position of North government. So no longer. And what this is at this Ambassador Malari. I feel that your call should not be here. That is a no. <laughs> you do not represent Earth. Party. I you represent vote. Yes. You vote for who? I vote yes for Jakar. It is one to one. You represent Amba who? Ambassador, you are about to be removed. You are voting. Answer my question. Mr. Garibaldi, remove the Pakmara from the chamber now. I ask that the answer remove the, the Pakmara from the chamber now. And kill him, please. I have an answer first. No. And then I will leave. No. You, my fellow ambassadors, you will stand for this. I said we will discuss the matter at length if you are out of voting. No representative so government. Ambassador DeLynn, how do you vote? I vote yes. I vote for Ambassador Jakar. To vote stay. is two to one for Jakar. And finally, <coughs> Ambassador Kosh. <laughs> Ambassador Kosh has voted no. The vote is tied two to two. The non-aligned worlds will now vote together. The, and, we'll choose, and the result will cast one vote to break the tie. Allow us to confer with our colleagues. I think we, will, we should take a brief recess so they can confer. I will allow a five minute recess and then we will promptly reconvene to finish this matter. I suggest that the Pat Morrow representative I suggest that we're setting a dangerous precedent allowing the door post and the lens post to call the device and we can't confer with him. That's right. Not a line vote, yes. <laughs> that breaks the tie, and that is that Jakar will stay on the council. Yes? I have two points of order. That if we are having a vote about the legitimacy of his place on the council, then it seems fair that we have votes concerning the legitimacy of um, Sheridan's and of the lands, because both of those seem to be brought into question. There has been no motion made to question the authority, my authority on this council. But perhaps um, we should I bring a motion forward to question the authority of the members of the government that could be construed as rebellious factions of that government. I mean, if you're going to allow one, we should make sure that Babylon 5 firmly agrees and supporting all these rebel ideas. And I am sure that they will lose um, much of its military backing if they do this. Unfortunately, I must agree and second your proposal. Ironically enough. 
<laughs> I was dismayed at the bullying tactics of the Vorlock, running roughshod over the concerns of the members of our council. Perhaps you would like to hear from the speaker now <coughs> of the uh, Mimbar. <coughs> And who will sponsor that speaker? I believe that there is an already mentioned I will sponsor that speaker. I'm back. Shall never be rid of me, Glenn. Seems that way. You aren't Sheridan. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, this is a problem. I want Sheridan. I'm not speaking with you. Well, I'm sorry. I'm taking Captain Sheridan's Bernie place. Sheridan. Then perhaps you shouldn't speak at all. Oh, you could only hope that, Glenn. Well, we shall discuss, Glenn. I hear there are various attacks among various planets, the non-aligned worlds, I believe all have suffered from this. It is not Minbari forces that are doing this. However, let it be known that the land has secretly been assembling a fleet of ships that occurs in Minbari technology and of the Vorlons. I have proof here is a location of them. Data crystal. Secret location. Damaged as her forces attack guards. No room. May, may I? Jump I was the you? most interested in that. Fear. Yes. Have this analyzed for me. Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it would be best if a neutral person analyzed the data. A most wise suggestion, I feel. Perhaps we should have a council member whose authority is not in question, such as my own. Or perhaps mine, since it is no or longer in question. Or perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, as a small group of independents, the non-aligned worlds could seek to analyze this for you? As long as it's not a map. I data crystal. <laughs> no. I'm sure we have the computer ability to deal with it. And I have multiple copies, should you attempt to alter it. <laughs> well, that makes things better. Mr. Garibaldi. If you can see that one copy goes to the I want to uh, hear from the land on this topic. I have not heard a confirmation or denial of this accusation. Excuse me, please. I was in consult with Ambassador Kosh. Can you please re repeat what you addressed? Um, you, there is an accusation made against you of a secret gathering of military forces um, with evidence provided um, that is now being attacked. Um, I wish for you to uh, confirm or deny these accusations. As I'm sure some other people might. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak, Glenn. Minbari cannot lie. Or are you no longer Minbari that feel you're going to deny this? The Minbari government has been cooperating with the Vorlons in the creation of certain technologies. The Minbari government. It is not for the conquest of other worlds, it is for our protection. If this is so, why was not the warrior caste consulted? The worker caste works, they build the ships. The warrior caste was born. You prayed, we they fight. denied the right to build these ships. They yeah, said not. that other races did not need to be protected, that we should stick to ourselves. And I believe it is in the best interest if of all the races the here what? to have a mutual sense of protection and feeling of well-being yeah. where we stand, especially on Babylon 5. And that is another reason that the Nubai have chosen to guard Babylon 5 from the Earth's forces who have tried to overthrow its legitimate government. Why did you not mention this tweet before when we were discussing the defense of the station and the be of an Because it is still out? under construction and not yet ready to be assembled and sent out. Under construction and under the watchful eye of four Charlene cruisers controlled by the warrior house. Think wisely before you make a single move. <coughs> Why would the warrior caste wish to deny protection to all of the other races here? Do they have their own agenda to serve? What? Uh, Commander Vova, uh, if I might ask you a question. Yes? Are you a duly representative, uh, authorized representative of the Mimbari government? I'm elite Naroon. I speak for the warrior caste. That means no. authorized <laughs> 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 to withdraw Ambassador Dolin? Uh, by your government. Out. You are not an authorized representative of the non-planet. 
Um, actually, I am. My legitimacy here has been entertained. Your, your vote here has been confirmed. Not the legitimacy with your government. It's a separate thing. The council yeah. saw fit. However, let us beg that question. Against the legitimacy. The Mimbari government has not I'm called them back. The land has been placed in a position by the previous The chair has the right to speak before guests of any other ambassador. Right now the question at hand, if you'll wait a moment, the question